Timberframe Systems is built up of a pre-manufactured off-site build system. Uh, Timberframe has been around many, many years, but now it's all about closed panel, energy efficiency and airtightness. Why it is so popular these days is it's a complete build system. Design, supply and erect all the walls, all the floors, the roofs and all structural elements. So we give you a complete system which gives you program certainty and cost certainty. The materials commonly used for a timber frame system are 140 mm CLS, Canadian lumber standard, and then that is built by a 38 mm stud which is kiln dried and of standard is what we call a C16 structural grade. And then that is sheathed with a 9 mm OSB board which is actually gives the racking resistance to the panel. And then on the outside of that, we have a breathable membrane. And then on the inside of that panel, then the world's your oyster, really, of insulation systems with a timber frame system. It could be a polyurethane insulation factory fitted, glass wool, any natural fiber. The possibilities are endless, depending on your budget requirements and design requirements and thermal performance you're trying to achieve. The benefits of timber frame, cost, it delivers best value, um, thermal performance, air tightness, speed to build, sustainability. It's a pre-manufactured uh, build system built off-site by a third-party accredited uh, process. Acoustic performance and uh, full design flexibility as well. People say to me, can I build this in timber frame? If you can draw it, we can build it. The thermal performance of timber frame is exceptional. Three out of four self-builders are building in timber frame and majority of the market is building. At the end of the day now, timber frame is over 30% of the market share. It's climbing because it's an acceptable build process that's giving fantastic thermal performance because it's naturally thermally efficient and it's naturally airtight. Your build times are very, very quick. You can be anything from three days to a week for a small build up to sort of two to three weeks. On average, from the time that timber frame starts, it can be in the dry within a month. The only thing that really slows the timber frame down during the install really is wind. But otherwise, cold conditions, wet conditions, doesn't matter. The first step in the process is obviously architect's drawings. Um, so you'll need to have got yourself a plot and you would buy that plot based on either outline planning or full detail planning permission. Those drawings come to us with layouts, sections, elevations, and they can be planning drawings. They don't need to be sort of detailed drawings, one to 50 drawings. They can be planning drawings, which we then can turn around a, a fully detailed quote from that within 10 working days. From a point of view of the erection of the timber frame, nine out of 10 self-builders will have timber frame erected by the timber frame manufacturer. Those installers know the timber frame inside out. Every timber frame is slightly different. And also there are cash flow benefits because at the end of the day, by having the timber frame erected by the timber frame manufacturer, your timber frame will be supplied zero rated for VAT purposes because we're designing and supplying and, and installing a service. It'll arrive on site with our installers and our contracts team then over the next week to 10 days two weeks they will turn around and install the, your timber frame up to roof structure ready to be wind and water tight by others and I will walk around that and actually make sure that it complies with all the drawings complies with all the engineering and hand over your dream to turn around and basically then for you to clad the whole element uh, internally and externally and running on to finish. How can you clad a timber frame? In whatever you like. There are no restrictions. Every cladding option has a base requirement and a slightly different fix in detail. In excess of 75% of the timber frames produced these days are having lightweight claddings. They're not using brickwork on the outside. And obviously brickwork is the only masonry cladding because whereas years ago people were using blockwork for rendered elevations, now it is a render board and two coats of render. The cladding does affect thermal performance. That's another reason why you need to stick to your uh, design requirements at an early stage. That's not to say it can't be changed. Everything can be changed, everything can be moved. But from a structural and thermal performance point of view, you need to decide on your cladding and stick to it. 
The options for insulation internally on your timber frame are massive. That's why timber frame is so successful. Majority of the mainstream timber frame is using a polyurethane insulation, which is then pre-cut um, and factory fitted within the panel. And then they turn around and have a site fitted line aboard goes on the inside face of the panel, which is reducing the thermal bridge through the stud and obviously improving the air tightness. But you have then also got breathable insulation, sorry, where you can use glass wool, uh, uh, warm cell, wood fibre, where some people are actually using what they call breathable wall technology. And people say, well, how can I have breathable wall if I've got an airtight house? But basically it breathes from the cavity through the sheathing board into the insulation and back out, which does help an element of overheating to turn around and have self-cooling. Um, but it enables people to use natural materials. We can use all of the different insulation systems it's driven really by the ethos of sustainability budget and what your key drivers are really So as we were talking earlier with the build-up of the wall through, peeling our way through, you've obviously got plasterboard, 15mm plasterboard on this face. Then you've got your service batten, as we said earlier, it was 25 by 50, or in this situation they've used 100 by 25 to give them a slightly bigger ground for fixing the plasterboard. With their services on the inside edge, get clipped down. You've then got an air tightness membrane around the inside of the uh, timber frame on top of the insulation, which is wrapping around into the window openings. That's then on top of a uh, liner, which can be anything from 25 mil up to 110 millimeters over the face of the timber frame studs. With a 140 mil stud, with 120 mil of insulation between the studs. We've then got a 9 mil OSB board on the outside of that, with a breather membrane on the outside of that. And then in this situation, obviously we've got lightweight cladding, as you can see all the way up to first floor, of two different types, but it just goes to show that the, the system through the wall is exactly the same, with a clang to batten on the outside, and then a render board and two coats of render. Or as you can see on the first floor, we've actually got uh, the counter batten with the uh, render clad. But also, one of the things that's quite neat on the outside of here is people say, well, with these lightweight cladding systems, how do you finish them at the ground? And you'll see that with this system, you've got three courses of brickwork around the bottom, which turns around and gets you that masonry skin around the uh, below damp course to then break it and uh, work your way up then with your lightweight cladding. Internally, there always used to be that sort of uh, thought process that timber frames were noisy. No, timber frames aren't noisy if they're built to the standard and they're, and they're insulated to the regs required. So you insulate the internal walls with a, uh, an acoustic insulation prior to plasterboard and you insulate the floor zones with an acoustic insulation again prior to plasterboard. Those are using acoustic insulations which then turn around and reduce the travel and noise. And then obviously as in the uh, building we're in today, you've actually got a screed floor which can be used as well, obviously for underfloor heating and things like that upstairs, which again, help with the thermal performance but help acoustically. What should you look for in a timber frame manufacturer? The first without doubt is to make sure your timber frame is supplied by a member of the Structural Timber Frame Association and that means that your manufacturer that you're going to have building your dream home has followed a fully audited process and a third party accredited process and you're buying with confidence with buying it from an STA manufacturer with the STA Assure with building control and warranty providers you have what they call a gold silver and bronze element with the gold and silver elements that means that the mortgage lenders and building building control know that you're third party audited so it gives them confidence as well as giving you confidence. At the end of the day when that timber frame arrives on site 90% of that timber frame will be paid for before it arrives on site. You sign the order and usually with that it will be a 25% back payment made on day of order. After that, there's usually three more payments. There's usually a payment of about 35% six weeks before delivery. There'll be a payment of 30% a week before delivery, leaving a 10% payment on completion of erection. So that then once that timber frame is delivered to site and it's been installed over a week to 10 days, then one of us will turn around and come to site, walk you around it, answer all your questions, speak to any follow on trades, sign the timber frame off, and then obviously your last 10% payment is due.